it's actually one of the most important and historic day for me because it's the first ever film preservation and restoration workshop. I think it's really a privilege that we have such an eminent uh, faculty and people from around the world who have come to help us build our cinematic heritage, I would call it. Probabilmente anche questo sia un momento storico, storico per ognuno di noi e storico per il movimento internazionale che vuole preservare la memoria cinematografica. I think uh, this is really a historical moment for uh, each one of us and for the movement uh, that's trying to, to preserve um, cinematic uh, heritage and memory. One of our main primary goals of the Foundation is to create awareness about the loss of India's cinematic legacy. The so beautiful film that made in India is now in danger. We have made 1700 silent films and only five or six complete silent films remain. Some years ago, when film industry was talking about the film institute, they told me that this is the work of the work of the film preservation, which is the work of the archival work. This is only one person who is doing it in the whole world. And his name is Sri Nair, who is connected to the film institute. Today, it has been given so much to the film institute. And it has been given so much to the film institute. और उनके काम के सराहना की गई है इसके लिए मैं शिवेंद्र और जितने भी लोग इनके साथ जुड़े हैं उनको मैं धन्यवाद देता हूं उन्होंने ये एक ऐसी संस्था का आज उद्घाटन किया है जो कि हमारे फिल्म इंडस्ट्री के लिए बहुत ही आवश्यक है वी आर हियर सिंपली फॉर वन रीजन बिकॉज वी लव सिनेमा वी लव रेस्टोरेशन एंड वी लव टू शेयर आवर पैशन विद यू Restoration is a long process and what precedes restoration, it's a very long process. It's very time consuming, it takes a lot of perseverance, it takes a lot of understanding of who you're talking with. You repair the film with your hands, okay? And the difference is made by you, no, not by a software, not by a tools, not by an hardware. It's made by your hands. All the information of the actual stock will be always in black. So it's important to know what information belongs to what element. My first job was inspecting nitrate. So that was my very first job in the archival field, was opening cans of nitrate film to see how badly deteriorated they were. They don't let students do that anymore. <laughs> this is what regular film burns like. Is it on the ground is okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So which one's this, Ryan? Right? Safety film. Oh, this is the safety? Yeah. It's not only that the nitrates burn easily, it's just impossible to stop the fire when it's hot. So you can imagine tons of that yeah. with in one building. It can actually be really explosive. This is film deterioration. We know what it looks like. The emulsion is starting to go, but there's still an image. There's still an image left, you know, and so that's really very much informed our way of dealing with analog preservation. It's like, look at what's, what's left on these pieces of film that we have so that we can preserve them. But with digital, it's either on or it's off. Uh, it's either here or it's not. You either have that bit of information or you don't. So when you approach a film uh, right older, especially if it's the family of that filmmaker. You're not just talking business. 
you're talking about something really intimate and personal about that creation, about that artistic creation. So you can approach them as a businessman. There are so many films which I like this. They don't have a monetary market today, but they need to be preserved. They also don't have a deadline because they don't have a market. They can, you can spend three years restoring it. I don't care, but just preserve it. Give me something so that my grandchildren can access them, can watch them. The best possible way to archive a film is get it when it's first made. Um, and that's part of what happens in, in a motion picture studio. It's a tricky job for us because we all, not always, 90% of the time, we work with dead technologies. Okay? And we have to find a solution to use old machine, old equipment, and as well, to modify new equipment to our goals. In some scanners, you can capture even, you'll be able to see the perforations, maybe not the whole of them. Some scanners now uh, are even aiming towards capturing the whole of the film strip itself from edge to edge. Uh, but even, uh, even in other systems, you'll want to consider uh, capturing this much bigger area because you might need that later on. After stabilization, you'll need to zoom in a little bit. tell you from BFI experience with the ARRI scan, uh, we're finding less is more for scanning at certain speeds. So we're trying not to apply too much tape uh, as we might have done for, for film printing. And to repaint it, you have to put a piece of new film inside. We need to reconstruct every single perforation because the first goal of the film repair is to give back to the film is physical integrity. This is not the right position. Also, this is not the right position. In this way, you can see the tear is less visible. You see that this part has no emotion because cement doesn't work on a machine. For us, if every single line of dialogue we hear this, every single line, that's not good. It takes our attention off the movie. Often the best looking element for a film isn't the best sounding element from a film, so we pull audio from a different source and often they don't match. Those noises at every single cut of the editing they were there, they were the limit of, the, uh, of that technology, but if we can get rid of that, our perception will enjoy. In the end, modern ears want to hear more low end and more bass, you know, it, it just makes things sound bigger and better to us. On the Apu trilogy, I was really concerned with not removing, like I said, sounds that revealed clues to the film's construction. sounds like with absolutely no processing, totally unrestored. Here's what it sounds like after we run a fairly moderate declicking pass. I think the most challenging aspect of the sound restoration was really being true to the way that the film was originally recorded um, and faithfully representing the way that sound originally would have sounded. We just have uh, our records and we have to check if all the actors that we have is uh, consistent with this record. There's so much understanding you can have of a time and place with just one singular image. And imagine what a whole movie can do. You cannot wait. You cannot wait so you have fun then you do the preservation. But we did anyway. And this is a kind of attitude and we, we just show our attitude to our government and to our society and that people understand. So this is the how, we, how it, it is. You, you will never get enough fun, but you do it anyway. The scale of, uh, of, the, in the, scale of the priority, we have OCN, original gamma negative, interpositive, dupe neg and positive. So every time you will duplicate it, the original used for duplication would be slightly smaller than the virgin. The only way to preserve or restore a film in its best quality is when you find the original camera negative.
control over the, the whole process of his filmmaking. This is why we have an archive that has been preserved in the hands of his family uh, that is almost complete. This normally doesn't happen. His production paper, his stills that stem from his um, artistic activity are more or less here in this archive. We're talking about 200,000 units, meaning paper, stills, negatives, positive prints, everything, graphic, lobby cards. It's a great wealth of uh, material. The purpose of restoration, obviously, is to preserve for long term these films for the new generation, but one really important component is to bring that back on a big screen. The films you're about to see tonight are 100 years old. We picked those in particular because uh, we wanted to show you this miracle, this sort of revolution that happened in cinema between 1914 and 1917. Even there is the impression of the focus. If something is out of focus, we cannot give back the focus. We can just simulate. We can use filters that give the impression of the focus. In the original, there's no uh, black shadow here. Whilst with the sharpen, yes, because it increased the passage between this and this. Today, using the digital technology, we can do even a much more better color correction, much more modern color correction. Okay, but the problem is that that film now is 50 years old, and we have to respect the aesthetic view of this film. When we talk about color correction, we use 5% of the power of the color correction suite. You need to know when you have, you have to stop, because the goal is not to do beautiful, it's to do correct, to do respectful. When I create a DCP, I will choose this resolution. This is the 2K flat resolution. I will choose this resolution for 1.85, 1.78 if it's a new maybe video movie, HD movie, 1.37, 1.33, 1.11. Uh, In all these cases, I'm always narrower than my maximum, and so I have to choose the height as a limit. It is not the medium on which it was originally saved because, you know, even when when people are shooting on a camera, that doesn't even stay on the same media for more than you know an hour or two because they take that tiny little flash drive that's in the camera and immediately move that to some other sort of media. So you know, digital, from its very inception, is constantly moving and copying itself. After the restoration is completed. It's not the end of what we're doing. It's an actual beginning of what we're doing. It means that that film exists again, and so it needs to go to festival, it needs to circulate, it needs to be bought, it needs to be discussed. What we lack is not the equipment, I must tell you that. It's, it's the intention, the manpower, the thought process, and giving it an artistic interpretation. That restoration or anything to do with films is an art. We are all citizens of cinema. We must take pride in our cinema respect it as an art form and an important visual document of our times and ensure that it is preserved for posterity. India has a singular cinematic legacy that is endangered. What is lost, we need to find. What is there, we need to restore. What we create, we need to preserve. It's time we recognize cinema as a national treasure, one that must be saved and protected. The school will be a great way of creating awareness of cinema as an art form, as well as building an indigenous resource of film archivists and restorers who could go on to save 
our cinematic heritage. I congratulate all of you for getting this certificate. Obviously, you all have passion and dedication and determination to do this. You're all certified now. We are certified.